Welcome back to Morgan's video blog, Morgan's online blog in video format. Today, I'm here to talk to you about writing motivation for doomsday cults. Imagine some reverb here. Doomsday cults have been around probably since before the beginning of civilization. Both readers and writers find them endlessly fascinating. But what motivates someone to start a doomsday cult and why do people join them? At the titular panel at Balticon 53, Gail Z. Martin, Lisa Hawkridge, Tom Doyle, and Daryl Schweitzer discuss real-world cults and give you tips for putting them into your writing. First up, who starts doomsday cults? Well, now, no two cults are exactly the same, but there tend to be certain traits that their leaders share. First off, you're probably going to have a charismatic leader who has a need for control, a professed conviction that something is wrong, probably with society, and the ability to turn anything into a sign that they were right. So why do people join doomsday cults? Well, for those of us who have never been in a cult, um, it can seem fascinating and curious, but humans aren't that complicated. For those of you who have gotten out of cults, good job. Um, people typically feel drawn to doomsday cults when they are in a transitory period in their lives, either leaving home, ending a relationship after the death of an immediate family member, a job loss, any sort of big event in their life can leave people feeling vulnerable. Um, and often people who have suffered trauma are especially vulnerable, especially to someone who says that they have the answers. And the people who join cults want to believe. They want to have something to believe in. And they want to feel that by joining that they'll be able to avoid death or have a clean death while all these other people will suffer, or perhaps just that they'll be rewarded in an afterlife. People also like feeling smarter, more pious, just somehow better than other people. People like being on the in, on the know, where they know something that the rest of the world doesn't necessarily know. Also, some people are drawn to the very thing that keeps them trapped, the peace of not having to make a decision. And for some unfortunate few, some were born into cults. So now we know who leads them, who's in them. What are the stages of a doomsday cult? Well, first off, you start with the recruiting and preaching. The doomsday is usually set about 30 years out because it's not too immediate, but a generation is soon enough that you feel like you should care and you have time to do something. Secondly, members are often encouraged to give away their worldly possessions and donate their money and services and time and energy to the good of the cult. Third, typically cults are going to isolate their members from the uh, wider world and the wider world's other opinions that might not agree with their cult leaders. As time goes on, people typically start to see cracks in the leader's story. But very often, because of sunk cost fallacy, often don't want to admit to themselves or others that they've been duped. Others admit to themselves and leave, but they're not who this story is about. And finally, doomsday arrives. And then what? What happens after doomsday arrives? Because clearly we're still around Doomsday has not actually happened, except maybe regionally, small localized doomsdays, who knows. So when doomsday arrives and nothing happens, the leaders and or the followers are left with a few options. 
Sometimes the leaders can make something happen. We look at the tragedies of Jonesville, where they literally drank the Kool-Aid with what is called a revolutionary suicide from the children and the mothers giving poison to their babies and then drinking the poison themselves. To the um, Om Shirinko, uh, where the leaders secretly set off sarin attacks in the Tokyo subways to cause the end time chaos that the faithful were expecting. Um, another option is nothing happens and the followers turn to violence. They've been duped and they're angry and they're going to lash out at the people who they feel betrayed them. Forget that field. They're going to lash out at the people who literally betrayed them and duped them. Um, another option is that the leaders might just double down and declare that this was a test of our faith or they miscalculated and they'll just move that end date out. And sometimes doomsday cults outlive that charismatic leader. And in those cases, it either slowly falls apart into nothing or it becomes a religion. One example of that is the Seventh-day Adventists. Some people claim that the Mormons, others say Christianity itself, kind of follows that trend. I'll leave that question up to you. Um, so that's a lot to think about, but somehow it feels simpler than it should. Now note, most doomsday cults take something from reality, some tiny grain of truth, and Preach it looking through the looking glass. Understanding what factors go into real world doomsday cults can help you create the people and the worlds um, that contain fantasy or science fiction doomsday cults. And remember, when writing your own doomsday cult, you need something that is believable. Truth can be stranger than fiction. Tune in again next week as I share more tips from Balticon 53. And as always, thank you for tuning in. Feel free to subscribe below. Any comments, any questions you have, I'll be happy to answer them. Bye-bye. See you next week.